So I'm going to introduce, we have two performers today, um, and I will introduce the first one. This is sophomore Mia Carver. Um, and she has qualified for two different national tournaments coming up. The first one is the National Catholic Forensic League Tournament, which is in Louisville this year. And the second one is the National Speech and Debate Association Tournament, which is in Phoenix. Um, and this piece Mia is doing is a dramatic interpretation, which is um, a 10 minute dramatic monologue. Uh, essentially. And um, this is the piece that qualified for the National Catholic Forensic League Tournament. Why do all these nights, forty years of churchmen hate me? What have I done to them? I have brought them luck and victory. I have set them right when they were doing all sorts of stupid things. I have crowned Charles and made him a real king. And all the honors that he is handing out have gone to them. So why don't they love me? In my innocence, I believe that you, who now cast me out, would be like towers to keep me protected. But there is no help, no counsel in any of you. Only for my voices should I lose all heart. You as good as said my voices lied. When have they ever lied? If you do not believe in them. Even if they are only echoes of my own common sense, are they not always right? And your earthly counsel always wrong. I have better friends and counsel than yours. The history of Joan of Arc proves that truth is oftentimes stranger than fiction. Joan was born in the year 1412 as a peasant French farmer in the village of Dolphin. Seventeen years later, believing she was acting under divine guidance, she would lead the monumentous victory of Orleans for the French, driving out the English and enabling Charles VII to become king of France. A year later, enemy forces would capture Joan and both English and their French collaborators, which she see Joan burned to death as a heretic. Hundreds of years later, Joan is now known as a national icon in France. In this piece, we will see the trial that occurs but the justices seated high above Joan would try her for crimes of never denying her divine communication to Joan, defying her gender, and becoming a heroic, secular friend to a male dominated power. St. Joan by George Bernard Shaw. It is in the bells I hear my voices. Bells come down from heaven and their echoes linger, or in fields where they come from quiet countryside. In them I hear voices. Hark, do you hear at the quarter hour, dear child of God? At the half hour they say, be brave, go on. At the three quarters I am thy help. But it is at the hour when angel voices come and say, God will save France. And then St. Margaret and St. Catherine and even sometimes the blessed Michael will come down and say things. And then, You do not believe in my voice. They come to you, but you cannot hear them. You have not sat in fields listening for them. When the Angelus rings, you cross yourself and are done with it. But if you would pray from your heart and listen to the thrilling of the bells after they have chimed, you would hear the voice of the Tell the truth. Everything I have told is the truth, but I cannot tell you the whole truth. God does not allow the whole truth to be told. You do not understand it when I say it. We have been over this nine times. I have sworn as much as I will swear, and I will swear no more. It is God's business we are here to do, not our own. What is my business? Helping mother at home. I call that muck. I will never take a husband. I am a soldier. I do not wish to be thought of as a woman. I will not dress as a woman. I do not act as a woman. I do not care for things women care for. I dream of leading a charge. My sword is... 
sacred. It was found behind the altar at St. Catherine where God hid it for me. Soldier living among soldiers then. And now I am a prisoner guarded by soldiers. If I was to dress as a woman, they would think me a woman. If I was to dress as a soldier, they would think me a soldier and I could live with them as I do my brothers. Do you wish for me to be a soldier in petty? I am no shepherd lad though I have tended to the sheep as anyone else. I can do the work, been in weave against any woman in France, but there are plenty of women to do that role. There is no one to do my job. It's why St. Catherine tells me I must not dress as a woman until she gives me food. I, a witch, Everything I have done has been ordered by God. You could not burn a woman for speaking the truth. Where would you have been now if I had heeded your truth? If you are to command me to declare that everything I have said and done and all the visions and revelations I have had were not from God, then that is impossible. It is his charge I take. Not yours. But you are not going to burn me. No, no, my, my voices, they said, say, Catherine and baby, they both. I, I have been mocked by devils. My faith is broken. If it were not true, there would not be a fire at the marketplace. I am dead in there, but only a fire would What must I do? Sign. I can make my mark. Perpetual imprisonment. Am I not then to be set free? Give me a writing. Light your fire. Do you think I dread this as much as a rat in a hole? My voices were right. His days told me not to believe in your fine words and your pity, Charity, that you were liars. You have lied. You promised I was to remain alive. You think that being alive is not being dead, but it is not the bread and water that I fear. Bread has no sorrow, water no affliction. But to keep me from the light in the sky, to chain me so I may never again rise the hill, and to make me free foul, damp darkness, and keep everything that reminds me of God. When your wickedness and foolishness tempt me to hate him. All of that is worse than the furnace. I could do without my war clothes. I could drag about my skirt. I could let the trumpets and banners and soldiers and let them leave me as they leave the other women. If only I could hear the wind in the tree. The larks in the light. Hear the blessed, blessed church bell that bring my angel voices. So I shall go into the flame of God's bosom. For I am his child. This world is too wicked for me. I will go and let the love in the common people's eyes comfort me from the hate in yours. You shall be glad to see me go. If I go now, I shall go through their heart. Forever. 
go. God be with me. That is my last word to you. And then I'm not going to leave you on a sad note. So now we're going to do a humorous interpretation, which is essentially the same thing you just saw only on the funny side. But I do want to share a little story about Mr. Owen Claggett, who is a sophomore. Yeah, you can go on up there. Yeah, yeah. Show off that farmer tan. Uh, Owen signed up for so many lessons this year that I had to tell him to stop because other students couldn't get in to meet with a coach. And if you are an educator, you know how much it hurts your teacher heart to have to tell a student to stop, right? Um, but I finally talked to him about what, what was going on with all these lessons. And Owen told me that he was really upset because last year he did not break to the final round of the Kissel State Tournament. And he knew upon reflection that it was because he didn't work. And he said, this year, that's not going to happen. And so I, I cannot tell you how much and how hard this young man has worked. And it paid off because he finished the year as the state champion in, in the very event he did not even break to finals in last year. So. Uh, and that is the piece you are going to see today. Um, so this is his humorous interpretation, which if any of you have a 1990s heart, you'll get something out of this. What was what was what? I heard something. It's nothing. What if it's something? What if it's some thing? <laughs> Stop it. That's not funny. Let me check. Hello? Hello? There's nobody here. Are you sure about that? I'm sure. No, come in here, baby. All right. As a wise man once said, into every generation, there is a chosen one. She alone will stand up against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness. She is the Slayer. <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. My coaches told me to say it. To be honest, I didn't know a whole lot about Buffy when I first started researching this piece, but I've now realized that her story, it really embodies the high school experience. You know, doing homework, making friends, killing vampires, getting to school on time. It's a lot to handle. High school can really suck. Uh. Yeah? <laughs> well, it's nothing that a student like me can't handle. With a little bit of grit, determination, and a wooden stick. This is Buffy the Vampire Slayer by Joss Whedon. Hey, hey, girl. She seems kind of weird to me. And what kind of name is Buffy? Well, the chatter in the cafe is that she got kicked out of her old school. And that's why her mom had to find a new job. <laughs> Guys, who put this death out of my locker? Transition. Oh, what plays Buffy? 
I hate to interrupt your downward mobility, but I thought I'd let you know that you won't be meeting Coach Foster. You know, the woman with the chest hair. Because the gym is closed due to an extremely dead guy stuffed in the girl's locker. <laughs> what? Some guy was stuffed in the girl's locker. Was he dead? Oh, way dead. Well, how did he die? I don't know. Well, were there any marks? Marks? I didn't ask. All right, I've got to go. I'll see you guys later. Who transitions? All right, Giles, what's the sitch? Sorry. You heard about the dead guy, right? The dead guy stuff in the girl's locker? Hear about him. Well, it's the weirdest thing. He's got two holes in his neck and all his blood's been drained. Isn't that bizarre? Hmm. Oh, I was afraid of this. Well, I wasn't. It's my first day at a new school. I was afraid that I wouldn't make any friends or that I'd have last one's hair. Not that there'd be a vampire on campus. And I don't care. Then why are you here? To tell you I don't care, which I don't. And now I have. So, bye. You have no idea what's going on here, do you? You think it's just a coincidence? You coming here? That boy was just the beginning. Oh, why don't you leave me alone? Because you're the slayer. Into every generation, there's a chosen one. See alone, old stand up against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness. She is the slayer. Blah, blah, blah. I've heard of a four, okay? What do you know about this town? Well, it's two hours from Macy's. <laughs> Take a little bit of the history of this place, and you'll realize there's been a steady stream of fairly odd occurrences. I believe this place is a center for mystical energy. Things happen here you wouldn't find anywhere else. Oh, please. This is Sunnydale. How evil could it be? Three transitions. No. Come on. Hi, I'm a ginormous skank. Do you want a copy of the Watchtower? <laughs> you used to be so good at this. Are you going out tonight? Yeah, Mom, I'm going to the club. Will there be boys there? No, Mom. It's a nightclub. <laughs> Just careful. I will, Mom. Four transitions. Are you here with anybody? Just here. I can't stand it. It's for me. Oh, yeah. Well, why not? Whatever cool, there would be. sounds, and then I have to go away. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real easy. Well, my philosophy is life is short. Life is short. I mean, yeah. Why don't you spend your time being shy? You know, seize the moment. Because tomorrow, you might be dead. <laughs> oh my God! Five transitions. Oh, Giles. So, you like to party with the students. Isn't that kind of skanky? Oh yes, this is my idea of having a pot. Watching clown head people dance around is not my idea of having fun. Oh, I'd rather be at home with a good book and a cup of Oh, You need a personality stat. <laughs> you know, this place is the perfect breeding ground for vampire activity. Dark, crowded. You know, a vampire looks normal to the human eye until the feed is upon them. Only then do they show their true demonic visage. 
You're like a textbook with arms. I know this. Well, then you'd know that a vampire slayer like yourself can see them anyway. Can you tell me if there's a vampire in this room right now? Well, I can try. Go on. Reach out with your mind. All right. Here goes nothing. There's one. What? What? Go down there, talking to that girl. I mean, come on. Look at his outfit. With the jacket and the sleeves rolled up. Only someone who's been living under a rock for 10 years would think that was a look. Talking to. Oh my God. That's Willow. What is she doing down there? She's seizing her moment. <laughs> It's nighttime, baby. <laughs> See, if you'd like to go, I know a shortcut. Have you ever been to the mausoleum? <laughs> Bad musician. If we don't find one, there might be another dead body in the morning. Oh, there you are. With a vampire. Willow, get out of here. All right, dude. What's the jacket? Come on. Live in the now, okay? Because it kind of looked like David Bowie. Now, we can do this the easy way, or we can do this the hard way. Well, there's only really the hard way. Wooden steak. That's gonna leave a mark. Thank you. <laughs>